Welcome to Sports Quotes and Facts Untold. Today I'm joined by Luis Lopez, who coached New Everton signing Beto during his years with Unio Tires. Uh, Luis, how pleased are you to see that Beto's made his move to the Premier League? Well, uh, for me and everybody here, I'm, I'm firstly, uh, I, I'd like to send regards to everybody who's watching. And uh, for us here, and I'm speaking on the behalf of the club, obviously, um, we were really, really excited. Uh, some of us emotional, as you can imagine, because he's uh, one of the guys. Is uh, everybody loves him here, and uh, everybody watch him struggle. So really happy for him, and uh, and I think really happy for Everton too, because I, I think he will help a lot. Uh, so, Luis, can you remember the first time you you met Beto? Yeah, I um, I was uh, coaching the 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 team that was younger uh, than his team, and we used to train on the same ground. They had, they used to train on the one half of the of the field. We trained on the other half, and and um, we used to do lots of uh, games, friendly games between the the two teams. Uh, just to see how, how the guys were and, and Beto always stood up because of his height, of his strength and he was really loud. He, he used to speak a lot and, and uh, it was all in, always challenging everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And was it, was it clear that he, had the, that he had the talents or was he a player that, you know, really worked hard on his game? Listen, the... Uh, uh, on the on these early years and maybe till he, he was like uh, 13 and or 14 uh, I think his main characteristic was his uh, his speed uh, and he, sometimes people don't don't realize because he, he doesn't move his legs too much but he has a, a really wide step you know so he was really hard to stop uh, just by himself because of his uh, power and uh, his speed. But he was a um, really skinny guy, tall, like um, when you grow up too fast and your body doesn't feel like proportional, you know? And it was a little bit um, messy, like uh, <laughs> it was a, it was a, not the, the, the type of football player that you are used to, to see on, on the field. It was different, different yeah. different structure. Yeah, because I think some footballers are very technically gifted. Like yeah. they, they look perfect when they take the ball. Yeah. Whereas I think Beto is a different type of player, whereas yeah, he's yeah. more fast and stuff and energetic. I think he, he perfected... Uh, is is uh, touch with the ball, but in the in those early years, it was uh, a little bit clumsy with the ball. Yeah, the, uh, I can recall sometimes he he do this perfect movement because he always had some some feeling. I, I think he can all, all, almost like he could smell when the the opportunity was gonna was gonna be presented to him, and he he used to miss a lot of goals. But if you are missing goals, it's because you appear, right? He, he, he always was there, all the time was there. But I remember that he go one on one with the with the keeper, like all alone, and uh, like uh, he would fall alone, yeah, because of, of his structure. So at the time goes by, uh, I think he he got some knowledge. Uh, because of, he was really critical of himself and everything around him. And I think he had the, he, he gained the knowledge who he was, like from a, a player perspective, what, what was uh, his strengths and his weakness. And he, I think he was really smart on that because he, he uh, put the bet all uh, the, he, he, he he bet all his, his uh, energy on his strengths yeah. to be really, really different on the things that he was really good at. And I think he polished uh, 
his weakness and uh, he chooses really good not to be on a place that will show his weakness. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't think he, I'm explaining it too well, but can you and no it makes perfect sense it was yeah. you know he he played to his strengths really and yeah you know, I, I know that i know that he spent time at benfica where maybe at benfica you would have more of those technical players where yeah. where their first touch and their control is is more obvious whereas yeah. better was a different type of footballer that he would be in the right place at the right time and that's how he would score his goals yeah, yeah, yeah. and he, he didn't put himself on the situation that the ball would present himself like he was at, with his back to the goal. Mm -hmm. I think it was a, a moment that you realize uh, really soon, really in, at a young age, that it wasn't his best uh, moment. So he tried to pursue that that long ball, that ball in the back of the defense, and the the goal that he, he scored on the on this uh, first game uh, with Everton. Yep. Here we say it's a, a Beto goal. It's a, like his <laughs> signature. Yeah. It's a battle goal. Yeah. But did he always play centre forward, or did he ever play any other positions? Yeah, you see, uh, at, at the first he was uh, playing at in the wing, in the wing. But for me, when he played in front, I think it's uh, when he was really, really dangerous. And when when he went to to the first team. Uh, I was an assistant coach there, and uh, the coach uh, clearly put him on the on the on the the, the function that the striker uh, should have, and really, really, really dangerous. Everybody was scared of him. <laughs> one miss and Beto one on one with the keeper. Yeah, wow. Yeah, all the time. Um, Beto started his career as a youngster in 2007. Um, he was there until 2011. He's had a few spells away from the club. But in terms of uh, Unio Terez, where he's got his ground in, can you just tell us a little bit about the football club? Because I know it, it's located um, in Lisbon. Obviously, English football fans will know all about Sporting, Benfica. Um, Everton fans will have heard of Estoril, where Marco Silva uh, was manager. Then there are clubs like St. Trends. Um, where, do, where does your football club sit in all of we are in the middle, so <laughs> we can imagine everybody comes here for, for, for players, you know. We are just <laughs> in the middle of that. We are closer to Steril, closer to Steril and St. Um We are a little bit uh, inside from the, the sea, you know. So it's, um, it's a, a club that is a family, a family club, you know. Uh, built with the, the, the people from our, our community and just for you to know um, on the first team uh, uh, we have uh, like five six players that played here since they were four and they were five right you know so that's the project from the, the club just try to build up good character guys you know good men with good values and uh, always be on their on their foot. You know, you have to be good in school. You have to be. You have to behave. You have to be certain type of um, of a person for for play here. Not the talent. You know, it's always important. But have to be a special guy, mm -hmm. a really nice guy uh, with with um, with values. So. That that's our main goal, to to build the the, the man behind the player. And you, we use football because it's a really good tool because the the kids they enjoy it a lot. And some 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 of those guys, uh, I used to go to their school, talk to their teachers, so uh, I could know if they are going to school <laughs> and they are paying attention and they are not disturbing class, you know. And um, they, the kids always look at us like these figures that they had to follow. You know? mm -hmm. So the football, like, doesn't come second, but almost comes second. You know, mm -hmm. it's a tool for to 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 get to the to the boy. 
and this was always uh, our main concern that the, the the kids could grow and and become a, a really good person and develop their life and they develop this feeling that if you want something you have to work for it and you have to wait you have to be patient not everything is is gonna be like fast you know nowadays everybody you 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 start your net on on your phone if it doesn't go you, <laughs> everybody's really in a hurry so uh, i think we are on the right path and you can see it on the first team because everybody almost 90 percent are guys from our our academy mm -hmm. kids that play there like 10 years 17 18 uh, even more and it's a, a really a really proud club not being over there but it's a really proud club that has a project that uh, we're gonna keep up these kids and, and to the adult age so yeah. i think it's our main strength and build uh, uh, identity of the club absolutely and Beto had a year away at Benfica, as we said, when he was 13. And then when I think yeah. he was 15, he went to uh, Oras as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, um, he went to Benfica. He went to, he went to Benfica. They were, they were here. Uh, they were interested in the three, four, I don't know, four or five players, four players, I think. And uh, when his, his name was mentioned, I, I told him, just go, 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 go. Uh, because... For me, he was not prepared, you know. But if the opportunity presents himself, I, I, I thought he, he should uh, give it a go, you know. Because I, I, I was thinking that it was going to be really good for him to know to, to be on the big club and, you know, he always learned something. And uh, for me, it was really go, 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 don't look back. Every, if anything goes wrong, just come and see us and work and when in the in the year after that he was sent uh, back you know and uh, when he started to play here the ball goes on the sheen <laughs> and <laughs> goes away and everybody oh that was what you were learning at Benfica you know <laughs> the kids they don't uh, they don't uh, hold back you know and uh they play with him but it was a it was a little bit uh fragile because it was a, a tough moment moment for him and uh, i i don't think uh, he he could handle it very good back then i think he was 14 you know you can imagine he was a kid yep. and then uh he went away and went to Irish. but um i think he would he felt that it didn't make sense for him. He had the same problems in Norway that he, he was having in Tirch because his mindset was not great, you know. So maybe the things that would happen on the training field in Tirch, it was happening to him on the training field in Norway, but with a large difference. His family was not with him. His mates were not with him. His, his, his teachers, the things, the the everybody, the 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 president. It's a figure, very important figure for him, was not there. So I think he he thought that well, maybe I'm I'm gonna return. And when he catches the president in the in the beach, he was talking to him. Oh, it's the president, I want to go back. I want to go back. And he, he told him, Oh, if you want to go back, you have to clarify a situation with the coaches. So he went back. He was talking with me and, and back then I was I think in uh, under 16 uh, team and I was uh, on the first team of that uh, age and he went back I gave him like a one and a half hour uh, because I, I was told him uh, you have to know uh, the football is a really small world you have one face you have one name uh, any any time that everybody anybody mentioned your name you had to be associated with the the right values everybody that were, looks at your face and oh that this guy is a good guy it's a, 
that, those kind of talks, you know, he had 15 years old and uh, we tried to talk to him and for him to understand. I, I told him in that chat, if you want to be a professional, you don't have to uh, run fast and play harder. You have to change here. Mm -hmm. have to be different with a different mindset. If you want it, you have to pursue it. Nobody's going to give it to you and you have to bet all your clips there. You know, you have to put everything in there and uh, nobody can assure you that it's going to work out. It's like a, a bet that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you believe it or you don't. I just told him, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want it to be, you to be like a, a old man and thinking back and oh, if I did that, or if I did this, I could do it. Now this is this is now. Just put the work and put the mindset, and uh, from that moment on, and I uh, was seeing a different different guy yeah. with the, all the same characteristics. He was uh, nagging, this is like a was really tough the yeah. training because it was a it was a champion you want to win it all on the, on the training it was, yeah. it was being upset when you lose it like he's a really competitor you know so after that i think things change but firstly like i was telling you we are we, we our focus is to build up the men so we did stand, send him to the b team to the younger team so now you have to prove your value. You have to be humble. And only when the, the coach tell me that you are helping the team, you are doing everything that he wants to, you to do, only there I'm going to look at you for playing in the in your age. And he, he went there and put the work and nobody could... Uh, Point, point something bad from him and from that moment on you could see it in his eyes you know it yeah. was i'm gonna be professional i'm gonna be professional everybody ah oh, oh. but i think he he knew he knew he knew yeah and do you think you know because he was competitive do you think that his confidence took a real knock when he wasn't kept on at benfica do you think that's yeah. what the biggest yeah. thing was for him i think it was that i think it was that and uh, maybe the the way that he would see himself, you know, when you at at that age you go to Benfica, you start to think, oh, I'm, I'm not there with the guys. And then when you when you go down, maybe you think, oh, maybe I was wrong, or at, even at our age, if something really bad in work happened to us we are gonna question ourselves so mm -hmm. at 14 i think it was a, a a really special moment for him because uh, uh, that stubborn stubbornness that he has he applied it there and and we went he fly yeah. from that mom moment on you could see that was, something was, was different something was different and do you think, obviously, he had three different spells with the club where he came back, as you just said, he spoke to the president. Do you think it was, you know, he needed the right conditions to be around his friends, to be around his family, to be yeah. back home, to enjoy his football again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's exactly that. Because uh, um, some, something that we, we have here, it's a, a really solid group you know, of players because of those values. Those guys that are not aligned with those values, they 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 don't have the condition to stay. So everybody is the same. Everybody respects everybody. Everybody, if you play and I'm going to bench because you are gonna play, I'm gonna support you, and and that kind of thing. It's uh, I think it's not too common, and it should be, and that's something that we value a lot. And I think the he was missing his friends. He was missing his friends. He was missing that uh, those jokes that they had, they, they they are having with each other, and the support that he, he had also on his on his teammates because they they believe himself, they believe in him so much. I, I think that was was critical. 
the friends, the, the environment of the club. It was light, not the pressure there is uh, to learn, to play and to evolve. And it's a pressure that we put ourselves. So I think those combinations of things, he was, he was really missing it a lot. Mm -hmm. When he came back, it was uh, smooth. Mm -hmm. And when you mention about you know you develop the young players to to learn and to grow, um, just to get a bit of understanding about where Beto was at that time as a teenager, would his school and his home and his family have all been local to the football club? Yeah, he was. He used he used to live. I, I I don't know exactly, but I think his mother still lives there. I don't I don't I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to give you a false information. But uh, he, he used to live. Uh, near the the field near like one 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 kilometer one and a half kilometer i think from the field and um he had, i i all, only knew his mom and uh, some of these teammates were, were from the same neighborhood that he was so he was always with a, a a strong connection with the the club and the community around and, you know, obviously the players in his team, would they have gone to the, the same school as well? That's sort of what the team was made of? Yeah. Uh, here we have uh, lots of schools in the in the proximity. So some of them were. and But I think the real bond that they create was on the on the on those guys that lived on the same neighborhood that him. It was an even deeper, bond, uh, even deeper bond, you know. But I think the real bond was was uh, built at the club. I think was built at the club because uh, with lots of deci discipline, everybody had the same uh, structure, and everybody had to do to give it uh, his, his all, and everybody was treated like the same. If you were a super player, nobody cared. If you were a super person, everybody cared. So I think we value the the right things, you know. And the the environment just grows, uh, evolving that. Mm -hmm. If you are only a talented player, uh, it doesn't uh, add up. Yeah. If you are a talented player and an unbelievable person, then you have uh, the love from everybody. And you've got it um, when you were sort of coaching Luis, when the when he was in the team below, and yeah. then he made the step up after putting the work in, when did you know that he was ready to sort of make that step up? And then, can you remember the time when he played for the first team? Yeah, uh, the first team at the, yeah, the that age, like yeah. 16, 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can I can remember. So the the thing was I, I talked with uh, Marcel that was the coach uh, that was working on with him at the the, the younger team and uh, I told him we, we we meet and we discuss the how how this would work and um, all the responsibility became at Marcel when Marcel. Uh, did realize okay this guy is ready he had to work he had to work and don't be a loud mouth he had to work be humble and prove himself like prove himself from a person perspective you know so marcelo when the he thought he was he was ready because uh, here we work really closer uh, the coaches with each other and Nobody wants to keep the players from themselves. Everybody wants to 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 help the player to get at the higher level possible. So Marcelo talked to me. Oh, okay, uh, Luis, I think he's he's ready. He's, now is the time. And okay, let's go. Let's do it. But then it was a <laughs> it came a, an interest uh, story, uh, like almost an anecdote. Uh, because in the in this last uh, in this last train that he did with the the younger team, uh, the coach told him, "Oh, Beto, go pick the 
the the stuff i don't know exactly what it was if it was water if it was like uh how do you call it you know, the things that you put to mark yeah, the, the field the training cones yeah the training cones yeah, yeah exactly and uh beto already knew that he was gonna go up and he like he like he didn't hear it and he went off <laughs> It was a problem because the coach, oh no, Beto did this, and I had to be to come up with something that uh, pleased the, the coach because uh, he was right to be mad. Uh, and uh, since we already told Beto he's gonna come up to not mess up that, that opportunity, so we 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 thought he, he could be a water boy. <laughs> for the team yeah can you imagine <laughs> the water boy I, I, I told him to to come to the to the to the room and uh, I speak to him now oh, he did this now if you want to play <clears throat> you have to be you have to if, if it's missing water in the training ground you have to go leave uh, fill the bottle and then come up and then you can continue to the train if we, we are on a, a match and the, there's no water you have to get out of the match uh, fill the water and and then you can go on the match again and he would he was saying okay Mr. don't worry i'm gonna do that it was really in 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 that moment not not just there but that moment for me this story proves the the character yeah, from that because he w there was any moment that was missing water anymore, never. Right. He, he, he done the, the the job like perfect, and uh, we had a game with Bulnetsch. We were in the, I think we were second. They were they were first, and uh, we have to win for for trying to be champions. And we they come to the warm up and I was one, two, three, four, ten. It misses one guy. Who is missing? Who is missing? Oh, it's Beth. And I was with it. Oh, oh Beth, where have you been? Oh, Mr. But this month, like two, three months after that that uh, punishment, you know, I didn't even remember. And where were you? I was filling the bottles. Okay, just going. For me, that's like a mindset. What is the job? I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it better than everybody else. And I, I think that 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 story you must remember. He had the uh, 16 years. Yeah. At 16 years, there's a lot of people that wouldn't go pick yeah. anybody's <laughs> bottle. No, that shows as well, doesn't it? That as you said, when he came back from Benfica, something clicked in his head, and it and it's that hard work and character that yeah, you need to do your bit for the team, but it's even going above and beyond. And he's doing what you've instructed him to do, even even three yeah. months later. I didn't remember. I I was always always think, thinking on the game, and it disappeared to go. Yeah. To the <laughs> I think that that showed his mentality. It's yeah. different. And I, I think since he signed for Everton, there has a, sto a, a story has resurfaced where he did an interview about working in KFC yeah, yeah, while, yeah. while pursuing his dream. Were you aware that he had another job as well as trying to be a footballer at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we knew he was working. He, he even worked, I, I think he was working an extra shift when there was no uh, train. Um, in that day, the, he worked uh, an extra shift. He always, I think, his main goal was always help at, in, at home, yeah. Yeah, his family. I think that in his mind, it was never he, his goal to become a football professional. It was not for 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 him. But I'm a professional. Just to to support and and give the everything that he could to his family. And it's, uh, I'm really proud of that way of thinking. Yeah. And just for context of how hard he was working, how would 
your training and the matches tally up with when he was working in terms of would you train in the night or would you train in the day? Yeah, we used to train at night and we work uh, like uh, lunch and evening. And when it was no training, he went to the to the night. Yeah, yeah. it was really hard on the field and off the field. Yeah. So, do you feel like as well that he made a lot of sacrifices growing up to in order to to make his dream a reality? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, and I, I only him can can say it exactly, but. I think one of one of the the great sacrifices that it, that he made, and I believe uh, most of the guys that that uh, that uh, can become a professional player, it's the the choices that you do at a young age. Because when you are 16, the the, the young ladies, the, the the night, and it's a lot of the distractions ever. So much things to do and and for him to be focused on working to help at home and working to help develop himself and and help the team because he, he was always 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 a team player he always pushes everybody up um i think that that, that it's not a like everybody uh, ah, the sacrifice like walking long distance but yeah. i think it's a really really sacrifice uh, don't go to the bad places or to the places that that can ruin your body or don't do this or don't be with bad habits you know i think it's a uh, at that age i think shows uh, like his mentality he was focused yeah. and nobody could turn him away from from the focus that he had. because when he he played that uh, at 16 at the young team and at the time that he was going to be on the like under 19 you know the team just below the first team he didn't win there he go directly to the first team right yeah, yeah, it was really important for him because he was really powerful. He was really uh, fast, and the, the coach back then, Mourinho, uh, Miguel Mourinho, he really believed in him, and, uh, and I, I think uh, it was a, a perfect marriage because he he came to the the first team at a young age, but with his built not like this. Now he's <laughs> a little bit bigger. The, yep. the neck it's the most <laughs> impressive impressive thing for me because i when i showed him he has a neck like this and when i knew him when he was kid he had a neck like this so now he's a uh, he's more muscular but uh, back then he was uh, already big and he he would like to help uh defending always mm -hmm. he did always always uh, like to help defending as, uh, at the the, a really good notion where the space was and every and everything so miguel uh bet on him to go to the to the first team and i think it's it was great for him because when he was at the age to go to the first team he already had two years of experience yeah, yeah absolutely with the, with the guys with the men in, in, yeah. the, in the division that we were it's the fifth division division but we yeah. we have lot lot of quality here and some mm -hmm. players that that uh, that were professional now are here and uh, i think he proved himself he proved himself and i think when he saw it because i used to tell him when he was uh, a young a young kid like uh, 14 something like that um sometimes he didn't make the runs he wanted the ball on his feet to do the things that he saw on you on youtube and i was telling him you must realize you are fast here and fast on the champions league and some of these teammates left and but i really believe he's fast and he's fast <laughs> anywhere in the world and now he's proving that he's really fast yeah <laughs> It was I'm not here, <laughs> just here. So I think it was a, a combination of uh, lots of things that uh, that helped him a lot. But 
I think the number number one person that helped him was himself. Yeah. And you've mentioned as well, you know, the setback in Benfica and when he came that a few of his teammates, they were friends, but there would be some banter. And you mentioned then that when you said he was fast, some of his, yeah, some of his they were. teammates may have laughed. But were you aware that he had a bet with them that he would be a professional? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I knew he, he had a bet. I think he would. He would. I think he said five years. I don't know. Five years. I'm gonna be a professional. But you must realize on the on the on the dressing room those things. The guys pick it up and, and <laughs> always playing with him, but. I think he, he had really good support uh, in in the team. Everybody believed in himself. Uh, but some of the guys that they were really really close uh, from him, uh, I think uh, Neil Du Basil, Lin, they they always tell him just go for it. If you believe it, go for it. You can do it. And uh, now. Everybody is really, really, really proud. Some of the guys said that say that he's living our dream, not his dream, yeah. our dream. Yeah. Your dream. <laughs> and at that age, did he just always have a, a confidence? You know, despite the setback of Benfica, did he always know that he he was quite a special player? I I think he he wouldn't accept that the others were better. You know, even if they were, they he, he always tried to run faster or tried to get to the ball stronger, uh, to never uh, like balance the things. Even the the other guy was was better than him. He didn't care. He always think that he could win, and that was the, his mindset. We can be better. But I'm gonna win, and. and I think it's. I, I sometimes I we talk here and like uh, we have we had a really good player. Some of them are professional also uh, that that came from from our club. But uh, I think the main difference for him it was his mindset. He he could miss a goal like with no goalie. Everybody was putting their head, their hands of on on this head, on their head. But he misses. He went back. He tried again. Miss. Tried again. Miss. Tried again. And and it's not it's not any an easy test because uh, he, I think the 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 main thing that Benfica that 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 uh, that moment of Benfica uh, teach it, teach him uh, was. Uh, that uh, he was not going to back down anymore. Mm -hmm. To go, uh, like, go in front, you know? Go on, go on, go on, try, 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 till we make it. Yep. And in, in the fifth division, you know, obviously, in I guess in the English Premier League, it's a, it's a physical league. What was it like then for a young Beto? As you say, he was, he was skinny. Yeah, was he was but physical, or was he? Could he hold himself in that league? No, he was holding himself because uh, Beto is uh, like some of the kids from from our community. Uh, they are from a neighborhood that is a uh, economic level. It's a, a little bit lower, but they have um, they have a wonderful thing. They have the street. You know, yep. like the kids nowadays they live on the apartment, on the on this house, and, and don't don't go out to play. And those kids, maybe there's lots of things that that's difficult, but they had the street. They played on the street. And nobody wants to go down in the in the in the street because it, it, it will hurt. And so he had that mindset of the street. He didn't care. You can be two meters tall. And, he was still gonna hit you hard, so he always fought. He didn't care who is who, who was the opponent. Uh, I, I, I think I, almost sure I never saw him with scare. Mm -hmm. Never, never, never. Mm -hmm. Frustrated sometimes, uh, angry lots of times, 
even with me because I was really a pain in his ass. I was always <laughs> trying to push him. One time in the practice, I, I was told him uh, we were doing some tests that that his team had to uh, make goal, and I was uh, working with the defensive line, and uh, the things were not great for them because they were not going to they were scoring goals and I will, then I started oh Beto you don't don't score a goal to anybody you don't score a goal to anybody you can stay here like enough maybe an extra an extra hour you don't score a goal you don't score a goal it was like 14 remember when he scored this goal ah, ah. <laughs> you know <laughs> it was really uh, competitive you know, sometimes first frustrated and, and and sad but never scared so when he arrived to the first team for him it was a challenge and uh, never back down ever. and what was he like to coach in terms of when he was listening to you or, you know would he would he take a lot on board or would yeah. he ask you questions as well yeah really clever guy you know uh, sharp very critical he needed to to understand if he didn't understand why are we doing this or that you have a problem with that <laughs> yeah you have to understand you have to explain it to him so uh from my perspective that i always try to explain everything that for, for the guys to understand what what that what that's for it was uh, really easy uh, but he had a you know when you are some type of player you have that energy never please you know never settle and uh, he pushes the, the everybody around him if he, it was in training his team it wasn't doing good he was no let's go let's do this let's do that uh, the coach tell to this to do this let's do this and that and he was really smart because he he tries to listen, understand, and then apply. So for me, training better was a, always a pleasure. Yeah. And from what you've told me, Luis, it sounds like he was able to balance having confidence and determination with a real humbleness. Yeah, really. It, it, yeah. Never, it never went into arrogance. He no, was no, determined no, no, no. and knew how good he was, but he was also kept his feet on the ground. It's all all the time, all the time. If when when the game goes to the end and we used to do video analysis and explain the things to him, always trying to understand. Really, really humble, and I I never saw him getting some type of attitude, a bad attitude. You know, when they are growing up, eleven, it's normal sometimes. Uh, uh, do this, uh, you know, but he, he soon realized that those kinds of behavior wouldn't help him in life. Uh, nobody likes that uh, that posture. So, he, 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 like I said, really sharp, really smart, and he, he at the young age he was start trying to get the. They know how how the world works and uh, mm -hmm. I, I give him props for that yeah and he was compared to samuel Eto in terms of his playing style yeah he liked it a lot spared him all? yeah <laughs> yeah he liked he liked him a lot and i i, I can see some uh some things uh from from samuel Eto also in him i think he liked him a lot all oh, the time he was talking a lot yeah and when he signed for Everton, we saw images of him in an Everton shirt that his friends had bought him. Yeah. Was, was Everton a team that he always paid attention to even then, through Etu and sort of Lukaku? That I I don't know because uh, we all some we tried to separate to create a little yeah. bit distance. Maybe his teammates know not that better than than me. But I, I, one thing I know that the Premier League it was all always on his mind. Yeah, that's a dream and for me and for us we, we talk among each other among us and uh everybody was 
uh, have the opinion that Premier League would, would suit him really, really well. And in the Terez first team, when he was playing against, you know, uh, you know, more grown-up players, what was his main attribute then? And now that you've seen him at Everton, what would you say he's most improved since then? Yeah, when when he he started to play on the, the first team, his man, it, it was a battle's goal, like he, he, he scored there. So it was a really tough. Tough, tough guy defending really, really good, really tough. We always in in the in the last game, you saw him uh, stealing a ball from the back. Mm -hmm. He he elongates his really long legs and <laughs> and steal the ball. I think that's a, a really important characteristic that he had even then. And the speed, the goals were all all look alike. Uh, that kind of ball and he went for it or crosses and he goes uh, with Heather but the, the the thing that I that we talk in, in the, that I see that he, he really really um, um, developed is his ability to, to score you know, because I knew the ability to miss you know <laughs> <laughs> with him uh but uh, like i said he always showed up like 10 in the game and he always did this goal but now what i see is a um a player that that realizes that the the, the moment that you are going to hit the ball to the goal it's a technical moment like a, a pass or a reception a long pass a short pass and he's doing it with the Calmness, you know. We used we used to say, "Don't don't wreck the ball," uh, because it used to hit him with the lots of force. And now, what I see is, uh, is placing it, you know, at the right tempo, at the right time, and he's uh, had a uh, had a header game, you know, mm -hmm. good head. Yeah, uh, I think it's much much better. Even 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 the 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 times that he plays with his back to, to the goal, I think that it was an improvement too. You know, everybody that is gonna um, be on Beto's life, he will he will take something from that person, and yep. he's a really intelligent guy, and I'm sure that he's uh, taking the most advantage of uh, those great coaches that he's having there. And what was he like in the dressing room? Because I know you've said that you know on the pitch he could, could become frustrated or animated. But what was he like in the in the dressing room? Was he a talker or was he more quiet there? Uh, for me, I I never went there. Uh, even now, even today, I knock uh, because that's a player's place. Uh, but from the information that I have, it was a quiet, quiet person in this corner with his music. Focus is there. Is there getting ready to the to the to the match? Yeah, <laughs> or to the train. It was a outside from the dressing room. It was a a jokester. Uh, talks really loud. Play, but only with his closest friends. Yeah, right. It's a person that knows how to be. You know, mm -hmm. and he's at ease with his most. Uh, Close to friends, joke. Yeah, because I was going to say, what was he? I know you're his coach, so you might not have spent a lot of social time with him. But yeah. what is he like away from football as a person? What's his personality like? Yeah. So the the guys always always say this: uh, very playful. It's uh, always laughing, always joking around. It's a, a really fun fun person to 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 be around. Uh, that's what uh, his, his teammates say from yeah. him. He's a really easygoing guy, lots of fun, and really, really playful. Mm -hmm. And as well as the, the sort of water boy story, yeah. do you have any other memorable standout moments from Better? Uh, I, I remember that sometimes I had to push him down to shout with him because he was really <laughs> a tall guy. But uh, he knew that we that 
for me in my in my case and in the other coaches when, when we, we we talked to him it was it was it was coming from the heart and uh, it was to help him and we have a fantastic relationship and it's always it's always my boy yeah, I, I can look at him with oh, all better it's, it's my boy I look at him all better because I love him so much and everybody here loves him too because I don't think anybody has nothing bad to say for me mm -hmm. because he was always there for the teammates always there for the for the for the team and if he's there for the team he's there for the coach and, and I don't think anybody has nothing bad to say from I, I at least I, I never <laughs> listen nobody talk mm -hmm. And when Beto left the club in 2018 for Olympico Montenjo, um, they were in the third division. Can you remember sort of your final conversation with him for making that step up? Uh, back then, uh, it was a, I think it was it was a situation that was more treated with the, the president, um, and that time uh, with the the, the the coach, the, the first coach. Uh, for me, when I spoke to him, I, I, I asked him if he was sure, and uh, he said he was, and I wish him the best of luck, and from now on, I'm going to support Montijo too, yeah. and he, he went there, he started to score, go, 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 the rest is, is history, beautiful. And as you say, he started scoring lots of goals, and then he, he made another step up to is it Porto Menenzo? Yeah. And then that was before Udinese. You know, how pleasing was it to see that as he was progressing, he was still putting the ball in the back of the net? Uh, uh, sometimes he he scored some goals that I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've seen him uh, dribble the the goal, the the goalie, the the keeper, Drib dribble the goal keeper and misses. Two times in one game and seeing him grow 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 and now scoring difficult goals and uh, at, at that level uh, so it was really emotional for us mm -hmm. really really emotional because he deserves he really deserves it. the nicest guy so he, he deserves it all yeah. and when he sort of kept progressing he made a move to syria one of the the most famous leagues in the world you know what would you and the guy sit down and, and watch all of his games? Uh, for me, it's difficult because uh, every day, every other day, we have a uh, training and uh, it, it's complicated. But I know that at least some three guys, three, four, five, depend depending who, we, who who's who's available. I, I I know that they they sit down and they watch him play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing, and I see that you know since he's moved on, he's actually come back to the club, and I think he's been he posted a picture on Instagram of himself with like so his his friends. You know, it, yeah. it's important, isn't it? As you said, that there was a real close bond, and is it yeah. is it great when he comes back to visit? Uh, it's it's really great uh, because he's one of he's one of us. Obviously, he has now this uh, has this media going mm -hmm. after him and. He's up there, but um, like him, everybody that play there, when, when it's out, when are out, they were, are working. When they are available, they they come there. They, it's a, it's a it's a club that sometimes the players don't want to go there. Oh, they think oh there is better or there is better. But uh, when they 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 go. It, they they form a bond. It's really hard to to let go. So, yeah. for me, when when Beto comes comes here in Portugal, if he if he doesn't go to the club, I'm gonna pick him by the ear. Yeah, <laughs> he has to go there and and be with the guys. They they all, but it's a really natural thing because they are really really friends. So it's a really natural thing. The, the kids, the kids are different. The the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the younger kids, oh, Beto. In, but for the guys, it's our Beto, you know? It's, uh, 
everybody goes pleased because he's there, but mainly everybody's pleased because he's accomplishing his dreams mm -hmm. and he's doing good for his family. Mm -hmm. He's pursuing this great career that he always uh, wanted and worked for it. And every, everything is going to, to work out uh, really good. And I think it's mainly proud that everybody feels. Yeah, for buying, for, just for me buying his side, to give him a, a, an advice, something, but because he's our bet. And I think it's important what you say there about, you know, the bond he's got with the club. I think it's a good fit where he is now because at Everton, we have a quote, once Everton has touched you, nothing will be the same. Yeah. And it seems it's the same for Therese, that once you play for them, you and know, you may move on. But you scale, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, it seems, you know, that those, those core elements, you know, it, it seems like it's quite similar. Yeah, I think it's a perfect marriage because... Um, uh, for, for what I know, the values that you have there uh, are mainly the values that we believe it do, and he believes it. He's, yeah. he's going to be a uh, he can be a striker, but he's a team player. He's, he's, he's yeah. going to always mm -hmm. do an extra an extra work, an extra mile for the for yeah. the for the team, and I, I think it, it's going to be great because. I think uh, Everton fans will support also the 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 the, the attempt, you know, yep. the yeah. effort. The effort. Exactly. That's what I would say. You know, I I sit in the Gladys Street behind the goal, where hopefully I'll see Beto a lot putting the ball in the net. But I would say that for Evertonians, sometimes a tackle or effort can get just as big a cheer as a goal. Sometimes, depending yeah. on. How the match is so it, it seems like Beto his work ethic that should be another plus for Everton. Yeah, for sure, top 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 player in that regard. He's gonna work his ass off. Uh, you, you you better believe it. He's gonna give it his all. Uh, maybe for the most everybody, uh, he has to score goals, but he will help defending. He will help in the air. He will help on the ground. He will. It will eat this dead grass. Yeah, you can bet on it. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a, a perfect manage, really, mm -hmm. because the, the values of the club and the values of, that Beto have and the, the effort that he, he puts in everything that, that he do, I think he, I think you'll be really, really, really happy with him. And mm -hmm. I think he will, he, he will be happy also there. And for me, it was a great, great miss. Just how good a Premier League striker do you think he can be in terms of the goal scoring charts? I, I think it's it's difficult to to put an analysis on that because it it would be, it would it would depend also on the the way that the, the formation works. You know the kind of balls that they are giving to him and the, and if he's if he's on the high confidence moment. But uh, I believe I believe the, his teammates are seeing it now on training, yeah. and each day that goes goes past, they I, I think they will they are gonna believe mm -hmm. uh, uh, each day more belief in in Beto because of, of his uh, work ethic, and I I really think that he, he could be a surprise. You know, yep. on the Premier League, I can he can be a surprise because he's really powerful. He's invested a lot of his time in the way of uh, um, touch the ball for the goal, like the, the, the scoring moment. And I think he can be a surprise. I, I, I really think so because um, for these characteristics, if a if a defensive line is a, a step. Uh, a step wrong is gonna is gonna go so i really think it can be it can be a, a really good 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 surprise on the Premier League. because i think traditionally when you see a striker who's six foot four you you aim for his head and you maybe his yeah. chest yeah but i think he's quite deceptive that he's actually really good on the floor and making runs as well so yeah if, if you were if you were an everton midfielder how how do you think is the best way to to play the ball to better what is the is it is he an all-rounder that it doesn't matter how you play the ball to him 
I think um, if I if I if I play with him, um, I wanted to, to to wait for the moment that he comes to me and then goes. Go, you know yeah. those L movements. You know because you can give it give the ball when he comes and you can receive it and left the ball for you to to do the last touch for him to appear at the back or if the defender goes out with him if the goal if the ball goes uh, on that spot uh, behind the, the defensive line i think it's going to be really really difficult really difficult because he, he can do the runs the outside in and inside out so it depends how how the the coach will will ask him the movements but i i think it's it's really tough to 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 stop him because now he can receive from with his back to the goal mm -hmm. as easily as he can go so how do you stop that <laughs> no. yeah I'm I'm it's not my job <laughs> And from what you know of, of Beto's personality, you know, a lot of players today, they'll have come through academies and maybe played at the top level. So do you think the grounding that he's had um, with Tires, where he still had to work at KFC, he's worked to earn a living for his family, do you think that that will help him settle in more into a Premier League dressing room? I think he he, he knows the, the value of life, you know, yeah. the the effort that you have, that you need to put in, uh, I think he, he he values, he treasures the moment that he's living, uh, and he understands very clearly that football is the moment, and you have to hold the moment, the good moments as long as possible, and the the bad moments you have to put it behind your back and move forward. So. I think he's a, a really a, a really straight up guy uh, from that perspective he's not gonna he's gonna he's not gonna be distracted with the money and the, the things that are come outside from football because he, he has one goal in his mind be as best as he can be so i think it's the best goal possible for a football player that his only focus is help his family and become his best version of himself. So I don't think any anybody from the outside or I don't think anybody can disrupt that that uh, thought. And I think it's uh, a, a real value to have a, a player with that mindset on the dressing room. I really do. And now he's you know he's he's shined in Syria. He's now made the stuff to the Premier League. Just how special would it be if he if he can make the next step and, and play for the Portugal national team? Well, it's gonna be <laughs> that day. It's gonna be a we have to have to have tissues, you know. Tissues, yeah. But <laughs> if I, if I see him with the national team shirt, I, I, I don't think I can hold it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I know it's a big big dream for him, and uh, I I really think he, it's near. I really do. I think Everton will help him a lot, uh, and uh, with his work ethic, I, I really, I really think that he's closer now. Now that he's in Everton, I think he's closer now. And uh, as long as the, the the season goes, I think he, he will become more close. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I I really do. If he plays with that shirt, national team yeah. shirt. <laughs> It's going to be difficult to to hold the, the tears. <laughs> and I think it would, be, it would be more special as well, the fact that at Benfica it didn't work out, yet he will have, he will have come back to go again to, yeah. to prove himself and, and to get that stage to be playing in the same team as Benfica and sporting players. Yeah, I, I think um, not just because of that, but because of... Uh, nowadays, the, the 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 kids they are they are going to to those those big teams really early. You know, I know I know I know couple that uh, this kid went to Benfica. I think he was like seven or eight, and they they sell their house. They bought an apartment closer to the stadium just 
for the kid don't professional it was eight result the kid don't play football he became tired of that pressure uh, the couple is not together anymore so everything right. goes goes wrong when yeah. when you don't put the you have to go step by step and you have to let the the, the kid the kid choose and the, uh, you can give the the great the greatest advice uh, the advices that i gave to beto i gave to all of them yeah all of them i said i treat everybody the same way i, I told the same things to everybody but the the real power is when yourself when you say those things to yourself and you start to believe in it yep. that's the real power you can no oh, don't go that way go this route but he has to choose go this route and when you choose to go this route you, you are you are be responsible for that for that choice for that choice so mm -hmm. you, you if you go to this route you must you must you must uh, uh, arrive where you want so when you are involved in your own choices i think it's it's different then and, and beto beto made his choice made made his choice to 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 fight in every in every training uh, to to do an extra mile uh, i remember one training that they were doing like um you know you run slowly through the line and then you cross the field fast yep. you know everybody was was saying oh, okay no slow down you're making us look bad you know <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't he didn't care he, he he had made his choice i'm gonna go this route and i'm 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 uh, i'm responsible for that for that choice and i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna arrive when i where i want yep. he, he blindly believed in that and he went for it and now it's an a, a great example to to show our young young kids that if you believe in yourself and you are willing to do the right things many many players said i want to be a profession mm -hmm. but not tonight that i have to go to the pub okay no yeah, yeah, yeah. Not tomorrow uh, tomorrow i want to be a profession but today my my girlfriend is going to be having a party and i cannot i cannot miss it so i'm missing training yeah. it's a choice so mm -hmm. if you choose to be a professional do everything everything that you can do eat right rest well do your choices in life mm -hmm. which friends are good for you in each time of day and just go for it i think his mindset is really the difference I, I said to, to uh, I say this to the players all the time. You know, better secret. He believe and he do it. Not just I want to, but not today that it's messing my day. You know, you have to be doing sacrifices. And he he done it and gladly uh, he make it. Yeah. So, uh, and so when you when you when you do your team talks now, it's better a, a good example to give you young players. Yeah, sometimes uh, uh, mainly for the younger kids that arrive. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now came a, a, a kid that his first team, his first year on the on the first team and uh it really resembles that right yeah yeah i coached him from this he was five then he went to germany with his with his the family and now he, he came back so it, it resembles beto a lot he's really really fast he's really feisty goes to the every challenge like the last one and when i saw that i, I saw that that sparkle that uh, catch him running on the beach or when everybody's going out he's going to bed so um, because when uh, when we talk in the in the in the end of the, the last season when he was coming from the youth team uh, I said to him you, you know what Beto did this 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 and that 
You take care of the, your body, take care of your mind, focus and do the job. Every day counts and uh, don't uh, go uh, off your your path. And I think he took it to heart. It's a good example. It's a positive example. It's a, an example even for somebody outside from football that when you believe it and you put the effort, uh, I'm sure that you are, you are not going to be uh, uh, in the in the worst place that you were. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And when when that player is older, can you let me know so I can tell Everton so that <laughs> we can get another better? <laughs> you can come. You can come and pick it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just leave. Just, just go with him. Ah, I want the absolute best for 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 the kids and. Uh, yeah. uh, is has a lot to improve still. And just talking about young players and the, the sporting and Benfica element of Lisbon, um, Youssef Chimiti has joined Everton as well, yeah. Uh, from sporting, not you know, how big a deal can that be for Beto to have a compatriot in the dressing room? But also, how much of a benefit is it for Chimiti to have a player like Beto to learn from? I don't know, Chimiti, uh, I don't know his mindset. But uh, if he teams up with Beto, I think he, it will be good for him. Uh, yeah. If they have the same mindset, it's good for yeah. both of them. Yeah. Uh, if one of them has uh, a mindset a little bit off, uh, I hope uh, that the two follow the better example. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's always, um, it's always good to have somebody that you can speak in your own language mm -hmm. um, and uh, not too many because I, I think it's uh, the best thing that he, he can do now it's to be involved uh, in the in the country to be uh, as English as he can be uh, learn the language learn the, the, the costumes and uh, the traditions and uh, I think he's, he's getting to, the, to do that because in Italy you know, he was going to to the street with the first with the, with everybody. It's a, like I said, he didn't. He, he doesn't see himself like a football star. No, he sees himself like a working guy. Yeah, and as you say, as he is a working guy, you know, I'm sure he will come back to Terra soon. Are you excited to see him now that he's made that yeah. move and to congratulate him? <laughs> to give him a like a <laughs> like, like yeah. this That's on the back, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really excited to, to give him a hug. We talk on the phone, but it's not the same thing. I know we, I know that on those times uh, that phone may maybe like the battery only less than an hour or something like that. So. I, we only spoke to on the on the phone. Of course, it's uh, always a pleasure to see him, and uh, we are curious too. How does it work? How it is? What do you feel? And stuff like that. And he also he always wants to know how are you, how are we doing? How the team is? And who is playing? Who is not playing? Who misbehave? <laughs> <laughs> Those kinds of things and. Sometimes I send him uh, with, uh, like a place that, that we do. It's a, a, it's a really good moment. Like like for me, it's like yesterday. Yep. For me it's like yesterday. It's just uh, uh, a kid that comes home. Yeah, amazing. And finally, Louis, just to just to sum up, just how proud are you? Of him to make to make the step up to Serie A and then the Premier League. I think it shows. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, I think it's the uh, and and I remember and I remember you that I'm I'm here on the behalf of the yep. club. It's it's a, it's a it's our flag. It's our flag. It's our uh, uh, it's our pride. To have been involved uh, in this in this formation as a man, uh, mainly as a man, uh, and uh, every time he 
he goes a step further to his to his goal. Uh, it's it's a really proud moment for all of the uh, all of us. And we are just waiting for the next goal and for the next match. And uh, and now the, the the main thing that I want is uh, that he can he can he can deliver goals for Everton and, and the the people. Uh, can stay behind him and push him further because uh, he's a player when he's more comfortable is at his best when yep. he feels like the, the people are with him then he, he cannot fail you know he, he, he cannot uh, be short from the expectation of the fans I think it's a is his mindset. If everybody expects me to to do this, I believe also I can do this, so I cannot fail. You know, it's um, nobody is better when 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 he's under fire. You know, so that's what the main thing I want now. It's that everybody is happy. He's happy. Uh, the club is happy. The fans are happy with him, and you can. Uh, he can go on and score many goals, and uh, Everton goes up on the on the table. On the the, the table, he can can go up, and and everybody um, gains from this uh, from this signing. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, thanks a lot for your time, Luis. It's been so interesting to hear about Beto's development and his time with Tires. I know. You know, it's just so good to, as an Everton fan myself, to hear, you know, the grounding that he's had and, and the hard work that he's put in. It's just, it's so pleasing to see him, you know, at our club. And, you know, hopefully he will be the man to, to score the goals to, to get us up the table, as you say. I believe that. You have, I can bet with you. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to work out. Yeah. You know, oh. and, and for him, all the best because it, it's really, like uh, I say, it's a... Uh, it's a, a normal guy. You know, it's a really great person. Yeah. But, but well balanced uh, mind, and uh, the the only thing that he wants is to do his best. And I think you cannot ask for more. Yeah. And I think the, the Everton motto is nothing but the best is good enough. So I I think if Beto gives his best, you know the fans will love him. Uh, I think so too. I think so too. I hope so. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Luis. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot. Keep supporting better.